The former deputy national chairman of the People's Democratic Party PDP body, George, has urged the president to take steps to ensure to protect and unite Nigerians. He said, this is the time that President Muhammad Buhari should demonstrate a rallying, unifying leadership to bring all our people together. Well, joining us uh, are development analyst Chidi Lloyd and public affairs analyst Bola Oba. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. All right. Uh, Mr. Oba, the first thing that comes to mind is that many people have called to Mr. President uh, on the several issues of insecurity um, and the crisis that we've been experiencing all across the country. I'm talking about uh, the likes of the Nobel laureate, uh, Professor Wallace Shoinka, um, former president. Um, um, uh, uh, again, we also had um, um, the former head of state, his name is Abdul Salam Abubakar, I beg your pardon, also asking that we stop ball passing and stop the blame game to deal with the situation at hand. Now, I'm asking, why is it taking so long for Mr. President to deal with this issue, being that Nigerians have been divided for so long along the lines of ethnicity, politics, and religion. Why did it take so long for Mr. President to speak or deal with this issue? Because it is, it is in his nature to differ on major issues. He is a non differer very, very non differer He has profound history of differing on major issues. A is the man who was once told a couple of hours before his government was toppled, that his government was about being toppled, and the best he could do was to sit in the living room waiting for those coming to topple his government. <laughs> and when they came, the best he could do was to tell them to let him go and dress in his full uh, general regalia for him to be officially arrested. What else speaks to the nature of the man than that? Any other human being, given the powers at his disposal there, having for knowledge a couple of hours before his government was toppled would have decimated the ranks of the coup plotters. But this man just sat in his living room waiting for the coup plotters to come and take him. Look, we, we have chosen a man who at best, his circumstance has even been exacerbated by the unfortunate call of biology. Age is not even on his side anymore. And to be honest with you, for a man who only wrote one piece, one piece of literature in 30 years what, what, of being outside government, what, only one piece of literature Mr. Ob, to complain Mr. about. Mr. Oba, I know that the history of the president is very important in all of this analysis, but why in today, 2021, I mean, this has been happening before we got into this year, um, why could the government, which, with all of the powers that the government has, and Mr. President does not work alone, I know that the box stops at his table, but why couldn't he, with all of the people that he had to work with, even the guys that he has um, finally sent off and gotten new people, has he not sat down to deal with this, knowing how sensitive this issue is? And for a president who has contested so many times for this office, one would really think that the president would do everything within his power to, to leave this country a better Nigeria than he, he found it. Do you think that this issue is highly politicized? Is that, is that question for me or yes, for yes, my sir. colleague? Yes, sir, for you. And then, of course, Mr. Lloyd will join us. It is in his nature. And to be honest with you, we, we, uh, look, uh, a number of times, I, I, I thought I've said it before on this platform, it is very difficult to work competently for an incompetent principal. And that is why people like Gaba Shehu, people like, uh, what's the name of my brother, 
is another spokesperson. They don't irritate me when they try to rationalize, when they try to rationalize illogicality. Look, you keep saying people work for him. Do you want to be seen as facing your principal? Do you want to be seen like you are, you are goading your principal on? It's, it, it's pretty difficult working competently for an incompetent principal. That's the fact of life. Interesting. Mr. People Lloyd. People work at the place of their leaders. All right, Dr. Lloyd. Um... It took forever for the presidency to speak on the issues of the herders versus farmers, and we just talked about it a few minutes ago. Um, it took so long for the president to speak on the issue in the Northeast, and you know, we just hear that somebody is posted there or there's a reshuffling. Um, it takes a long time. People have to scream and cry. I mean, we saw what happened with the NSARS. It, it was very quick, this, this, the, the response that we got to normal protesters was way better than the response that people were hoping for in other parts of the country where we have pockets of violence. Um, but there are critics who are saying that this issue is being overly politicized and that could be the reason why Mr. President has refused to speak on this and he's taking everything under advisement. Where do you stand on this one? Well, um, I want to I agree with the last speaker uh, in the studio there who, who had also said that this is one president who does not believe in talking to the people he leads. Uh, you recall what happens in the, in the United Kingdom where every Wednesday you watch the British Prime Minister appear before his legislators for what they call question and answer session. He talks to the people. You also recall what happened during uh, uh, last year uh, during the pandemic where the British uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, makes uh, uh, broadcast. He talks to the people of Britain every now and then on TV. In Scotland, uh, Mrs. Tuga, uh, the Prime Minister, the uh, uh, Junior Minister there, also talks to the people. So it is important that communication, communication is very key in the act of governance. When you don't communicate, you leave the you leave you give room for all kinds of conjectures. Uh, uh, the gentleman in the studio has given several instances. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the All Progressives Congress actually uh, hoodwinked Nigerians into believing that President Buhari has uh, 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 all it takes to take Nigeria to the next level. If you ask me now, what I, what level are we now? What well, it will not be. Nobody will have any difficulty. In telling you the level where we are. Now, uh, it is said that, uh, so we, we have someone who tells us oh, that uh, Boko Haram has been degraded technically, uh, subconsciously, all kinds of English, when actual, in the actual sense, uh, Nigerians are not safe at all. Uh, this, uh, when the issue of Dabchi girls happened, uh, first there was uh, the war that happened before Dabchi. Uh, any serious administration would have would have known that uh, it should put a stop to this kind of uh, uh, incident. Only yesterday, some, some kids were taken in a school in Kagara in the Niger state. So what it means is that they are beginning to instill fear. And at the end of the day, illiteracy will be the order of the day in Nigeria because parents will not be comfortable to send their children to school for being, fear of being kidnapped. And of course, this president may not believe that such things happen. Because he doesn't communicate with anybody. Uh, how, I how I'm sorry. Uh, how do you how do you mean the president? Actually, actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dr. Lloyd. How do you mean the president might not believe? He's the president of this country. He yeah, lives in you, this you country. I, I, I suppose that he listens to the news and he gets feedback so from his people, and they give him up to date information as to what's happening across this country. I would not want to believe that the president is left in the dark. I do not. I do not work in the presidency. So but then you made an assumption. For me uh, to actually agree that the president is giving an up to, the president is briefed on issues, briefed regularly on issues that happen in Nigeria. We will see the result of such briefing. So if, because I do not work in the presidency, I want to believe that uh, the, those his aides may not even see, see, do not even see him. Because if the president sees his aides, and they tell him the true state of what is happening in Nigeria, this president will wake up. So unfortunately, what Nigerians are waiting for now, 
we are praying on a, on a daily basis that uh, the tenure do come to a halt and so that we know we, we, we can follow this, 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 this I'm sorry. inept. I'm, so, I'm sorry, once again, I'm really sorry. I apologize. Nigerians can not wait. I apologize, Nigerians Dr. Can Lloyd. Nigerians cannot but... wait for that opportunity. And we are... Can I ask a question? You say we have to wait until this tenure finishes. A tenure is not supposed to just come and go. We're supposed to leave and enjoy and benefit from a government. Do I mean, are you trying to tell us that we should just wait and then no matter how many people die or whatever happens, we should just wait for the president yeah, to leave? Is what is the I sense mean, in that? What the government, the essence of government, the essence of a government is to guarantee the safety of lives and property. Now, you have a government that does not guarantee that. What you do is wait. Since we cannot, I cannot advise resort to self-help, we can only, only wait. And as religious people, pray to God for time for, for the administration, for, for, the, for time to run quickly, so that we can have a breath of fresh air. We, do, we, we are not in any doubt as to which political party to vote for. In the coming in the coming general election. Well, this is this, this is, is, this is beyond. The this citizens is, do not have powers to remove the president of, from office. It is the national, the members of the national assembly that we have voted. They do uh, do not also listen. Do but, not also hear with due respect. They but, are not in tune with what is going on in their constituency. So when you have this kind of situation forced on you, you only resort to prayer. Mr. Oba, I'm coming back to you. The Sasha incident, the Sasha incident that happened over the weekend, uh, Mr. Oba, some people have said that it's a ripple effect of um, the things that have been happening in the country, especially with the farmer herders um, conflict. Something that would not have, you know, ever happened in Sasha did happen. Um, could it have been avoided? Because what we saw uh, was a pretty ugly incident in Oyo State. Huh? That was fundamentally a socioeconomic problem that manifested in utter, utter chaos, anarchy, and violence. Many people are feeling the unfortunate circumstance of the economy. Things are tensed. And in circumstances like that, Issues such as a bit of xenophobia, more so in the backdrop of what you alluded to earlier on, more so in the backdrop of the uh, farmers' elders' clashes in Ogun and on your states, in Ogun or your states, uh, issues of kidnappings in the Southwest generally by people who are generally believed to be of a peculiar, peculiar tribe. Indeed, the Sultan of Sokoto, the most respected Fulani man in Nigeria, not too long ago said that in cases of kidnappings, when the perpetrators are arrested, seven to eight out of ten happen to be Fulani persons. Indeed, the President General of Meyetiala, whilst constituting the Northwest Executive, Northwest Regional Executive of Meyetiala, lambasted Fulani elders by saying elders and, and leaders that Oh, I think we lost Mr. Oba there. Uh, quickly, in closing, uh, I'll give you all uh, a, mi uh, a few seconds each. Uh, I'll start with you, Dr. Lloyd. Um, how do we heal um, the country? Because Mr. Bode George, alongside former President Abdul Salam Abubakar, are asking for us to unite instead of disintegrate, which is something that we're seeing happen right now. Uh, we're heading in that direction. How do we heal? Um, the country at this point with all of the things that are happening? Well, uh, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that uh, what is going on. Uh, you recall that before this administration came into office in uh, 
in uh, 2015. Nigerians had hoped that uh, we will soon be, that this was at El Dorado. Uh, that it's unfortunate that after the first term and halfway into the second term, we are still blaming the previous, previous administration for the, for, the, for the foes of Nigeria, for the woes of a country. So uh, it is difficult for the country to heal. The country cannot heal when you have people from a particular ethnic group known as Fulani. Ah. Enjoyed by the president. Oh, I think we're having issues with Mr. Lloyd. Uh, back to you, Mr. Obak, in uh, closing. Vice in Deputy. So it's not the country cannot heal. So we can only continue to pray for God's intervention in this nation. Okay. That's what we have resorted to. All right. And finally, um, Dr. Uh, Mr. Oba, there have been calls. Um, and again, I would like to in emphasize that we have been divided along the lines of ethnicity, religion. And these politicians have taken advantage of those divisions. And now we really are clearly seeing those lines. How do we blur those lines going forward? The most potent phenomenon that blurs the lines of primordial sentimentalities, that blurs the lines of uh, intertribal fiction anywhere in the world. And, I, and I'm talking as somebody who has lived in about four countries in my young life, uh, two in Africa, uh, two in Europe, and the only and most potent phenomenon that blows that line easily is an economic boom. When people have a sense of belonging, that the economy is working for them, and they are finding their own traction within the context of the socioeconomic, uh, a socioeconomic picture. Apart from that, you can preach from here. You can preach from Lagos to Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Uh, if people are feeling hard done by economically, okay. they'll be given. They'll be given to some degree of anger. And anger naturally breeds violence. All right, Mr. Abba, we have to go. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Uh, Chidi Lloyd is a development analyst. And, of course, Mr. Bolaba is a public affairs analyst. Thank, Thank you, you so much for speaking Thank with you. us. All right. Well, we'll take a short break and find out what Nigerians uh, feel uh, about bearing arms for protection. And when we return, I'll give you my take. I don't think we are mature enough for that, too, from my own point of view. Because those countries, or if there's anywhere in the world where, are, where, where it is legalized for people to carry arms, it means they must have studied the citizens, people that live there, to see how mature they are when it comes to provocation or when they are angry, how they can you know, make use of those arms. But Nigeria here, the way we are doing here, there will be, <laughs> there will be mass burial. As a law by the citizen of this country, I don't think it's the best authority for one to be carrying arms. Let the when if there's any cause for you to do anything, you go and report to the police. So Nigeria is a law. We have a constitution that is guiding us, and the Nigeria constitution does not allow us to carry arms. So I'm not in support of people carrying arms. Well, it depends on the on the location or perhaps the state. I don't think it's necessary because I don't think Nigeria, with the, with the situation on ground, I don't think we are right for that right now. So the, the thing is not just about everybody carrying arms, it's for the federal government to do something very good and, in, and, and something very, very prompt in terms of how they can contain the headers and also provide better you know, welfare for the citizens because a lot of people are angry. So it's not the, the solution will not be everybody carrying arms. That's just it. Because... Uh... Because I want to protect myself now, I should be carrying gun up and down, or carrying knife. I know how many years I stay in Abuja. I don't believe in that. Because if you are carrying something ammunition, automatically you are ready for fight. Even if, if fight, we even be looking for you. Here's my take. Playing politics with issues that pertain to security is like a child playing with a lion's tail and hoping it wouldn't bite. I continue to ask why we allow pockets of violence and crisis that could have been nipped in the bud to escalate into bigger issues 
And then we begin to run from pillar to post. Why do we have to do that? Carrying arms in Nigeria is a crime unless it is licensed. If people who aren't licensed to carry are brandishing guns and using it to cause violence in communities, this has to be criminalized. We have made excuses such as, oh, they're outsiders, so they're not Nigerians. Does it make it right? Are outsiders allowed to commit crimes in Nigeria and get away with it? The Minister of Defense called us cowards and said we, would, we should defend ourselves. Imagine the nerve. Hmm. But this is the Nigeria that we live in. So let's stop this blame game and buck passing. The Commander-in-Chief needs to show that he's capable of protecting his citizens. And all the security chiefs have to follow suit by doing their jobs because you know what? They have their jobs cut out for them. Well, the time to act is now. I am Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. It's been Plus Politics.